for someone who is not very familiar with the Limits to Growth study, can you give me a, kind of a nutshell description of what that was about? It was an attempt at looking at what will happen on tiny planet Earth over the next 130 years. It was a study made in the early 1970s. It basically argued that the physical constraints, resource constraints, pollution constraints will limit human expansion you know, within that 130 year time horizon. And it basically said that uh, this is easily avoidable. You know, if you don't want to run into problems, one should simply try to limit uh, population growth and uh, physical economic activity. When you first ran the uh, business as usual scenario, were you surprised at what it uh, sh showed you? The starting point of the study was, of course, an assumption that the world is finite. So we understood that if, if you are trying to expand population and expand economic activity on a finite planet, you know, the whole thing will come to a halt. What was slightly uh, surprising is that uh, it doesn't come to a smooth and nice halt against the limitations of the Earth. It, actually it tends to, the system tends to overshoot the limitations, stay in unsustainable territory for a couple of decades and then collapse or contract back down into uh, levels of population and economic activity that can be sustained. How many scenarios did you run and were they all bad news? Uh, in the final book in 1972 there were 12 scenarios and uh, roughly the six first were bad, you know, where one tried to solve the overshoot and collapse uh, dynamic by different technological means. Uh, that did not work in the model system, so we then moved on to what you could call social policy, you know, trying to see what happens if we decide to have fewer children, if we decide not to allow consumption below, uh, above certain limitations and things like this. And, and it was, in 1972, fairly easy to make uh, rather attractive uh, futures where many people lived at fairly high standards of living for a long time. And yet uh, people, uh, certainly critics, focused on the bad news and how, uh, and yes. came up with way, ways to uh, discredit that in their, in their terminology, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because uh, we were very young and inexperienced when we wrote the book. But in our intent, this was a positive, optimistic message to the world. You know, we basically said, here's a problem. This problem is easily solvable. And if you just do this and that, then this will be a, uh, very nice. Uh, the reception was one of rejection of the problem, basically, you know, that, that people said the world isn't finite, you know, technology will remove all constraints and so consequently this is a non-issue. You know, that's interesting because in my, uh, my first film, Growth Busters, mm -hmm. Hooked on Growth, I'm quoted as saying I was offering people solutions to a problem and they didn't think there was a problem to be solved. That's what you're saying, that's, isn't it? That's exactly what I'm saying because I think that was the most general response. There was also the other response which basically said that that humanity will not be so stupid as to let itself expand beyond what is sustainable. So there was this type of diffuse belief in future good governance that you know, the parliament or someone else would see to that once we got closer to the limitations of the earth, you know, one would slow down and, and, and in a way put the system into what was later called sustainable development. Calling, 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 calling.